So we're going to have questions now. Dr. Afton's going to join me. And I guess I'll just hold on to this. And the questions are there. Thank you. Yeah. So the first question, what causes vulvodynia? And the answer to that is we don't quite know, but we're doing a lot of research in this area. And as I mentioned, we know that there are neurologically based changes. We don't know what they're triggered by. It could have been triggered by a yeast infection. It could have been triggered by uh, a time of uh, painful intercourse or possibly a long history of tight pelvic floor muscles. We don't really know the cause. But luckily, without knowing the cause, we can still unwind and treat the problem. Excellent. So I think this one actually a little bit uh, piggybacks off of what you're just saying. That can you explain the relationship between pelvic floor dysfunction and vulvodynia? And um, it can kind of, pelvic floor dysfunction, the hypertonic pelvic floor can cause vulvodynia. And then as a result of some vulvodynia uh, that might be as a result of infections could then end up causing muscle tightness because of the muscles trying to protect uh, the vulvar tissue. So it's kind of like a chicken or egg situation, but addressing the pelvic floor dysfunction with a PT can help relieve the vulvodynia symptoms. And then also treating the vulvodynia symptoms can help with the pelvic floor dysfunction. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of how is vulvodynia treated, as part of the assessment, we determine what are the most salient or important factors that are currently going on in the tissues. And as Kana mentioned, pelvic floor physical therapy is a very important component. So all of the pelvic floor muscles are examined for their tone, their tightness, their ability to relax, and for pain. And luckily, we have some very experienced colleagues, professionals, who are specifically pelvic floor physical therapists. And these, uh, these women, the physical therapists, are um, a part of our team and a very important component. And then we have other treatments specifically related to the tissue. We have creams or medications that lower the pain threshold, that alter abnormally functioning nerves in that area. And also, if the tissue looks thin and looks like it's lacking hormones, say from being on long-term birth control pills or other hormonal contraceptives, which can happen in some women, we may apply topical estrogen and or testosterone to thicken up the tissue and decrease the hyperactive nerves. And as uh, Kana mentioned, of course, the mind-body approaches. And sometimes surgery is needed, but this is uncommon when there is a proliferation or an excess of nerve endings in the vestibule and the other treatments do not seem to have been effective and are not playing a role any longer. Sometimes we actually surgically remove the little piece of tissue of the vestibule and bring the vagina out as new tissue to cover that area. And that can be very effective as well. So I think the last one we have is, can yoga benefit people with vulvodynia? And absolutely. It absolutely can because the focus of yoga is about bringing the mindfulness to uh, our physical experience as well as to our mental experience and helping relax the body and the mind when in a maybe stressful situation such as a difficult pose. So it's, it's a great carryover, but it's not always for everybody and that's okay, except for the fact that I say, or I've heard my, some of my favorite teachers say that um, if you're thinking mindfully about your breath and your movement, you're doing yoga. So maybe it is for everybody. And I think that's all the questions that we have here. And thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.